All right, ladies and gentlemen, straight live from the Lightning Network Hack Day in Munich, Germany. Some amazing stuff. I'm joined by Giacomo, of course, the, the, the world famous uh, man, the, the, the troll of the century. <laughs> um, yeah, what, what if, uh, what's your favorite uh, thing going on down here? Uh, difficult to tell. There are a lot of beautiful things. I mean, the, this kind of act days uh, on lighting has become uh, have become really the equivalent of what uh, generic technical Bitcoin conferences were yeah. back in I don't know 2013, 2014. It's true. We can do. I mean, it's fine and it's fair that Bitcoin development to a base layer had to become very um, safety critical, very conservative, very adversarial because that's what Bitcoin. I mean, that's what at stake. So. We had to turn from an environment of uh, um, mindless and uh, and careless innovation into an environment of very critical thinking, mm -hmm. while uh, upper layers can actually get back to the mood and to the uh, to the kind of attitude of uh, those early conferences. So yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, totally. I, I found that too. You know, some of the, the the conferences nowadays I go to, it's just full of regulators and bankers and boring really boring talks and also a hell of a lot of just shit coins pumping out their scams and uh, you know some of them aren't scams some of them are legitimately trying to do something cool in their tests but but there's just so much nonsense out there and th this is the type of event where you come and there's real people building real solutions to real problems and um, and really innovating in this space yeah. and that's rare that's really rare so so it's in a way, lightning is a, is a liberation because you can have uh, a piece of innovation which is uh, we're frozen. We're frozen. What's going on? You know, live stream as well, or just here? Uh, oh. <laughs> Stocking. <laughs> with ourselves all right we're back audio is there it's happening i'll check the live stream hello hello let's see ah we're back all right cool yeah um <laughs> yeah so we were I, I don't know where they they missed us but we were saying that uh, uh, from one point of view light a lightning Hack Day conference is a liberation from the kind of uh, uh, critical, conservative, adversarial thinking we have to have uh, on base layer. But also, is, is a fil it's a filter because since the since Bitcoin is the only actual project uh, that uh, uh, that is so serious and uh, and critical to have a second layer, uh, other projects can pretend to have some kind of marketing experiment, but basically they don't have a real function in second layer. It's also a filtering. Uh, filtering out shit coins and noise because I mean if you want to build on Lightning Network you have to build on the only Lightning Network which works at scale right now which is the Bitcoin one and so you have uh, a natural, uh, naturally occurring shit coin filter which is also very good for signal to noise uh, ratio. Yeah no absolutely talking of shit coins uh, how's uh, RGB on Lightning <laughs> coming along when can I create a shit coin on so on Bitcoin. The next thing is that you can already create a shitcoin on Bitcoin. Uh, the, the, the one funny thing about RGB is that it's designed in a way that uh, if you are creating a shitcoin on Bitcoin right now, nobody knows except for people actually uh, buying the shitcoin from you. So uh, there are already production uh, RGB transactions. Oh yeah. The first, yeah, yeah. The first one was uh, I think already eight months ago. The point is that it's not so exciting to watch outside the the, the people involved because yeah. it's so private that you don't know it's happening. Mm. Uh, but also the, the, sec the second problem is that it's only on chain for now. Mm -hmm. uh, two months ago, Aleko Sfilini completed the, the first, uh, let's say, uh, the, the first merge of a Lightning Network branch, but it's still very, very early stage. So nobody is actively maintaining uh, uh, color, asset colored uh, uh, channels on RGB, yeah. but it's still very early stage. But what happened is that uh, in, uh, in uh, Understanding Bitcoin conference in Malta, we got some company uh, mm, confirming some interest about RGB. So BitPhoenix now had, uh, uh, had committed uh, some developers uh, full-time to RGB. Uh, they are going to, as you know, they are going to 
uh, spread the Tether token across several different uh, platforms, scam platform and not scam platform. That's a, that's a, I mean, it's a yeah. very noisy move, but it could be a smart move because they basically the decentralize the, the risk of being requested of sensor. I mean, if, if they're only on Omni, they can be requested to basically act censoring or blacklisting. While uh, right now they will be on Omni, unfortunately some scam coin uh, version like uh, Ether, Ethereum and Tron and something like that. But also legit Bitcoin project like uh, RGB and, uh, um, and liquid uh, confidential assets, which yeah. I think are very complementary. Uh, Bitrefill also is committing to use uh, RGB at some, uh, at some extent and is uh, putting some uh, work hours on the RGB developer, but development. So Alecos himself, the main developer of the, of the project so far, has, uh, has joined uh, the, the dark forces of Blockstream. So now he will be probably focused more on, uh, on sea lighting or, or liquid or green uh, wallet. Mm. But uh, he's still overseeing the projects in uh, the free time. Yeah. And we have new forces and especially, I mean, the good thing is that we have use cases. We can have shit coins, but also we can have uh, pretty soon, I guess, Tether and some other Bitrefill projects on top of, uh, of RGB. So yeah. if you want to, to play around, you can issue your stuff already on chain. Mm. For the off-chain part, you can try it on testnet, but it's still kind of early. Yeah, I mean, I remember back when Colored Coin first came out, it was very, very early days. Litecoin had just come out or something like that. It was, it was really early when people started talking about Colored Coins and Coloring Coins and following through the network. And uh, and then when Colu then delivered on top of Colored Coin as a base protocol, uh, I, I think there was like a 15 year old kid that invented a lock, a uh, smart lock where you could use a Bitcoin to unlock a lock. And he did it over two weekends or something like that. Yeah. And then it sort of disappeared. And then a few years later, um, the, the Slocket came out and, and raised a billion dollars and this and that to create the same thing. And you think, guys, this has already been done on Bitcoin. And that's, a, and that's a constant actually in Bitcoin development. The smart people uh, at the edge of innovation, they try out things. They don't catch up because of some limitation. Uh, good engineers are honest about limitations, and so they say, okay, this cannot really work uh, as intended. So they, they put the POC there for, uh, for future development. Then some marketing guys, uh, usually on scan coins, come over. They take the original idea, they hide all the technical limitations. So the technical limitations are still there, mm -hmm. but they just pretend they are not there anymore. So every trade-off is, uh, is hidden, is, is, uh, is kept silent. And in this way, the, the idea that didn't succeed on Bitcoin because people were too honest to hide the limitations is now apparently succeeding on a scam coin just for the marketing phase. Everybody talk about that, everybody pour money into that. When they actually have to make it work at scale, it doesn't work anymore. So Ethereum cannot really sustain CryptoKitties and, and so on. Uh, the DAO get, uh, get destroyed. Uh, but uh, at least the marketing phase was uh, successful because uh, people is now not, uh, hiding limitation instead of honestly admitting them. So I think that uh, assets on Bitcoin has been discussed for a lot of time. Back then, when the, I think we had two main problems. The first problem was the, the market didn't have any relevant use case yet. The relevant use case for, uh, for tokens right now are ICOs, basically, mm. which, I mean, I hope it is already dead or, or dying use case, but it's still out there. Back then, ICOs, be, before, uh, before the Omni ICO and Ethereum ICOs, uh, they were not uh, such a big uh, use case, so nobody knew what to actually do with the token. Tether was not an important use case back then, uh, and, and so on and so on. And the second point is that uh, uh, Bitcoin layer one on chain has several scalability and privacy limitations, and uh, tokens have basically double uh, or, or, or expand this limitation of orders of magnitude. If, if, uh, if the blockchain is better for Bitcoin scalability, it gets even worse for token scalability yeah. uh, because you cannot use SPV, etc. And if it's better for Bitcoin privacy, it gets even worse for token privacy because mm. now your anonymity set on chain of the token is so reduced that yeah. everybody knows it's your token. You are, so, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I think that the second layer technology and second layer development can actually free up this use case again now that it's somehow relevant. Mm. So I'm, very, I'm quite optimistic about that. Still, I'm, I'm not so much into token. The reason we work on RGB is that we want to, I mean, 
we want, people seem to be excited about token and we want them to be able to issue and transact them in a less wrong possibly uh, way, uh, which is what we think this is, together with other solutions like uh, confidential assets or liquid. Uh, I mean, confidential assets is superior to RGB in any possible technical way, except maybe for uh, social scalability uh, and uh, long-term uh, long threat model, let's say. Yeah. Liquid network is a federation, so it could eventually be uh, facing some kind of threat model, social threat models. Mm. That mm. RG, in, on RGB, as long as people is running Bitcoin and a bunch of people want to run RGB, they can interact freely. With, with Liquid, you are assuming the survival of the federation, which is a pretty safe assumption, mm -hmm. but it's a different threat model, let's say. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really think keys, uh, you know, non-fungibles are very, very, very exciting because keys, uh, having a cryptographic token to represent a certain key to do some function is phenomenally, uh, uh, there's a lot of use cases. For instance, um, a train, train accidents could happen where the trains uh, go on the same track at the same time and you could have a train that uh, pays a non-fungible to a, to a tr track switcher as soon as it's on that track, it doesn't let any other trains on until that train leaves and it pays the non-fungible back. Th these are just little, little ideas, but they're interesting because you don't need to trust a, a central ser server. It's the same with if you're at home, you, you're trusting that a company won't get hacked with all the keys to everybody's smart homes. Uh, if you run an Airbnb, you could send someone a key and they could come back. Uh, you know that it's it's been given back to you. Yeah, so. smart property. So yeah, the, I mean, the, I I will use a lot of caution about this uh, imaginary use case because many of them don't really need the, the liquidity function of the token. So if you assign uh, the the ability to to go uh, go through a railway or to open a lock to a public key, then you only need public key cryptography. So basically you need PGP, not really token system. You need token systems when this right represented by the, the that you can express with the signature is a right that must be traded and, and moved around uh, very, in a very liquid way, which is a subset. I mean, when you have the key, uh, you can just, on Airbnb, you can just authorize the public key to open and then you, you take it back and you authorize another. It's, it's nice to have a single token, but it's not so necessary. Right. So the, I think the point where it's more necessary to have a, 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 a movable liquid token are more like uh, um, uh, money-like things like Tether or, or gold uh, equivalent, yeah. Yeah. which is maybe more interesting than Tether because you know, the regulatory stuff on US dollars is heavy. Yes. The regulatory stuff on gold is different. Yes, so we're, we're definitely looking at it. We're looking it at RGB, and that's why we want we want further development. We're we're, um, we're looking at liquid as well uh, for that. I think they are complementary. Uh, the, the best scenario will have to have both. Like, if you have a confidential asset on liquid and an RGB asset on on RGB, you can basically have Latin network on both, and you can atomic swap. And so, uh, they, I think they work best. Uh, uh, complementarily. Yeah, wonderful. So I think Jeff was uh, yeah, signaling Jeff something. Jeff was there. Folks, um, please, uh, you know, share the video around. There, there's some amazing lectures coming out of this, and we don't want to keep it in this small room. Mm -hmm. We want uh, the world to hear some of this research uh, that these people are doing. So, um, yeah, make sure you like and uh, and share the video around. And uh, I'll put it now onto the uh, onto the sponsors page uh, you'll hear nothing and so when the audio comes back keep your speakers on when the audio comes back there will be a speaker so keep your your speakers on go make a coffee and uh, we'll see you soon